unanimously viewed as the toughest test of the Golden Boys career. On a busy weekend in Las Vegas, tickets to the fight at the Thomas and Mack Center were simply impossible, as most of those with the privilege of seeing the biggest welterweight fight in nearly two decades had planned four months in advance to be there. Tail of the tape for Oscar De La Hoya against Ike Bazooka Quarte. A three-year age advantage for De La Hoya. Three inches in height. Quarte weighed in a half pound under the limit about 25 hours ago. Tonight, Quarte weighs 156. De La Hoya only up to 153. And a two-inch reach advantage for the champion whose title is at stake. Punch stat numbers, Larry Merchant. Quarte, the more aggressive, the more active fighter. De La Hoya, the more efficient fighter. If you've got a big gun, shoot it. Quarte has a big jab, and those numbers tell you he will shoot it. But De La Hoya's jab is a gun as well. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. He Oscar De La Hoya. Is scheduled for 12 rounds using those rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim! Scarcely an empty seat in the house as the Ghanaian contingent gets ready to make its appearance. his plan. It just worked out that way. state how big this event appears in his native land of Ghana. At 4.30 in the morning, and Quarte is a member of the largest tribe in Ghana. It is called the Ga tribe, G-A. He speaks the Ga language. And they are Ga Ga over this fighter. I wondered if you would take advantage of that. Never miss you an know, opportunity. You listen to those drums. I don't have the fond, the most fondest memories of uh, drums in my days in Africa. Your mind is drifting back to Kinshasa yeah. Zaire. It's interesting you should say that because it says I Quarte Bamaye. Oh, no. <laughs> I Here's the record for Quarte, 34 wins, <laughs> no losses. I heard the drums, and it ain't nice. All right, enough of the Bumaye guys. 29 knockouts among Quarte's victories, and that one draw with Jose Luis Lopez, an oddly scored fight, which was at first ruled a majority decision for Quarte, later changed to a draw. Most of us at ringside thought that I had won at least eight rounds in that fight. Here comes De La Hoya. for De La Hoya. His last loss was in the World Championships in 1991 to an East German fighter named Marco Rudolph. How long ago was that? The country doesn't exist anymore. 24 knockouts in 29 fights. The last one 
over Chavez in September here. Can you wait? We can't wait. Let's go to Michael Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. In association with Main Events, present the featured bout of the evening from Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel Casino and the new Mandalay Bay Resort Casino. This bout is scheduled for 12 rounds or less for the WBC Welterweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem, Commissioners Glenn Carano, Lorenzo Fertitta, Dr. Luther Mack, and Dr. James Nave. Timekeeper is Al Bicic. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Mike Lichella. Your physicians at ringside are Dr. Flip Homansky, Dr. James Wishgame, Dr. William Berliner, and Dr. Gino Signorino. This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. President Jose Suleiman, supervisors at ringside, Roy Van Patten and Eduardo Lamazon. The three judges scoring this contest on a 10-point must system will be from North Ants, England, John Keane. From Hartley, England, Larry O'Connell. And from Tokyo, Japan, Ken Morita. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Mitch Halpern. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold and weighing in at 146 and one half pounds. He comes to us tonight with a professional record unblemished by defeat. In 35 bouts, he has won 34 and has one disputed draw. 29 of those victories have come by knockout. He is a former world champion who surrendered his title for the opportunity to challenge the opponent he now faces across this ring. Ladies and gentlemen, from Accra, Ghana, Africa, here is the challenger, former WBA welterweight champion of the world, the undefeated Ike Bazooka Corte. And in the red corner, Wearing black, trimmed with white, and weighing 147 pounds. In 1992, he captured Olympic gold. And since, he has captured four world titles in four weight divisions. With a perfect professional record consisting of 29 bouts, 29 victories, with 24 knockouts. This evening, he steps into the ring to take on the most difficult challenge of his career. But he takes this step with the courage and determination that has made him a champion. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the former junior lightweight champion, former lightweight champion, former super lightweight champion from East LA, the reigning and defending undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy, Oscar This is legal, this is low. That's low, that's legal, understand? This will be a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Test guns, good luck. Okay. In their great fights, Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns exceeded very high expectations. How say De La Hoya and Corte? Let's go, let's go. 
if they give style points for relaxation coming into the ring, then Quarte is already the early leader. De La Hoya looks tense. Quarte looks eager. Round one begins with a Quarte jab and a Quarte left hook. Many believe that the first big question in the bout is what does De La Hoya do to nullify the Quarte jab? Now, George Foreman, you're in the minority who believe that it is not as heavy or effective a jab as is De La Hoya's. But as you look at Ike Quarte getting started here, talk about the bazooka jab and what it does for him. He's got a good left jab, but he still doesn't have the jab of the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. Oscar De La Hoya has this stiff left jab, and he keeps his hands up. He'll find that jab bumping into Oscar De La Hoya's gloves and elbows a lot of the night. When Oscar decides to land two or three good jabs, it could change the whole course of this fight. But you saw the most important punch that De La Hoya has thrown so far. He's trying to throw that right hand over the jab. He's, he's always been considered a left-handed fighter. And if Quarte's biggest weapon is his jab, De La Hoya's is his left hook to the body. He landed it twice in sequence just a moment ago. Now you see that jab of Oscar De La Hoya goes to the side of the face. And if he matches jab, jab after jab, he's got the reach advantage. His jab is supposed to reach target before Ike's jab. Chopping right hand landed for Quarte, but it does look as though the early strategy for De La Hoya is to out jab the jabber in effect. Well, he's forcing him to jab because Oscar doesn't see any openings right now. Quarte keeps his hands up real good. But you want to make sure whenever Quarte jab, you jab along with him. Quarte Every time the left jab goes out, yours should be going out too. Left hook to the body by De La Hoya. Quarte likes to keep his hands up in a piece of boot. Does that create an opening for De La Hoya to get to the rib cage with his left hand? Well, I don't think Oscar should go to the body this early in the fight because he is the taller of opponents. He's dropping his head down into some dangerous territory. You want to keep your head up as long as you can. Stand and utilize that height advantage. His head is up there away from Cortez's punches. Blood trickling from De La Hoya's nose. And that could be the product of the stiff jab with which Quarte has been rolling up the points so far in round number one. De La Hoya pounding to the body. Quarte blocking the left hook with his elbow. Blocks the right with his elbow there. And De La Hoya gets a right and a left through the guard. Quarte, normally a phenomenally fast starter, is forced to stand and watch as De La Hoya picks up the tempo here. Very, very intense action. He's allowed Oscar De La Hoya to punch him. You don't want to do that. It's not a joke if the fight continues on for a couple of rounds. Whether correctly or incorrectly, if you believe what Quarte has said coming into the fight, he doesn't have a lot of respect for De La Hoya's power. Un poquito Oscar, más laterales, side to side. Okay. A little bit more, side to side, and you're gonna be first with a jab. Stay, stay more busy with a jab. And keep, and keep him outside. Okay. Don't let him in. Keep him outside, side to side. And stay busy with a jab. Be watch my call, jab, okay, jab. Yash, come look right at this. Can't tell me jab. You're giving him too many chances. Like when they call, can't tell. Okay. Watch my call for right. When you hit him, you step back. When you hit him, step back. Don't let him, don't let him use his left hook. Okay, you gotta step back anytime you hit him. Okay, don't let him give a chance. Those of you who speak a little God don't need Fred to see close translation in that corner, but for the rest of us, Fred is the man. Jabs in round one by CompuBox numbers. De La Hoya 10 out of 33. Marte 9 out of 32. A standoff. Now there's a piston like jab from De La Hoya. His corner told him go side to side. Extending flat footy. They said go side to side and stay busy with the jab. You know something? Communication sometimes is a big problem with fighters. You, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. You can get away with it. Sometimes Oscar is young and he's kind of rebellious. You want to tell him to do something in a real sweet fashion, so to speak. You used to bring in Angelo Gundy, who would have nothing to do with your training camp, but who came to the fight to communicate with you in the ring. That's right. You need communications in the ring. 
The biggest copy of Ox News out of round one was that Quarte, throwing only 43 punches, threw less than half his normal first round average. Usually that's because the other guy punches hard coming back. Both showing some respect for each other's punching ability. Oscar's also doing a lot of waiting, and this is not what you want to do. If a guy can punch, don't wait on him to hit you. Go on and hit him. As far as him being a tough opponent, every opponent is tough. That's what you're a boxer for. You don't mind a guy being tough. Deloya backing up, making Quarte reach with his jab, hoping that Quarte will overcommit with the jab, and he can counter him with right hands, as Jose Luis Lopez effectively did in the late rounds of his battle with Quarte. And that's Oscar doing an excellent job of stepping back, moving around the ring, making this guy follow you, same time keeping your right hand up. If you can make him lean forward just a tiny fraction. That's right, just make him get overconfidence. And there it was, the right hand over the top of Quarte's left. Oscar want to go back into his position and don't get yourself out of position, reaching out at anything. Quarte has done a good job of keeping this balance. Quarte wears what amounts to a confident grin on his face throughout the action. He's De Loya with a look of determined tenacity. He's doing a good job, but you don't want to get in a boxing match with Oscar De La Hoya, I'll tell you that. You want to go on and throw your jab, keep punching him at all times, but he's standing there watching Oscar De La Hoya. One punch comes, next thing you know, you're hit with five or six. Even Quarte's biggest supporters would agree in most cases that De La Hoya is the more flexible, more multi-talented boxer. Uh, De La Hoya was caught with a good right hand that time. But comes back with a left, right, left of his own. Quarte getting on a left of the body as De La Hoya missed the right upstairs. Dropping right in hand inside by Quarte. Both fighters experiencing some moments in the closing seconds of round two. Let's take a look at the jab, and as you see, De La Hoya coming over with a straight right. Never been his best punch. Threw that one perfectly without a lot of power. Okay, you gotta fade this guy, and you gotta have more lateral movement. combination with which Jose Luis Lopez bedeviled Quarte in the late rounds of their fight October of 97 was counter right across the top of Quarte's jab, left hook to the body. He landed it over and over and eventually put Quarte down with a right hand. You notice Oscar's been so effective with his left jab that Quarte is not even trying to jab as much. Round number two, Quarte again threw sparingly, only 46 punches. De La Hoya threw more, 62. But Quarte landed at a much higher rate. But by the same token, George, Oscar is not throwing his left hook as much, and that's his big punch. Well, remember, Quarte is supposed to be this great jabber, and it is just not happening. You know why? Because Oscar matches jab for jab. Then when you take a guy's biggest weapon from him, then he turns ordinary and you try to attack him with your stuff. Yeah, but if he's taking the other guy's best weapon away, they've neutralized their best weapons and they have to show each other that they can beat each other with other stuff. And De La Hoya starting to get to Quarte with power punches in round three. Quarte grinning as if to say you didn't hurt me. Usually that means I'm a little bewildered that you're hitting me the way you are what you're able to do, you jab, throw right hands, and then use your footwork to make the other guy miss you as he tries to pay you back. And when a guy, and I'm talking about the gold trunked Quarte here, when a guy who normally throws 80 or 85 punches around is throwing 40, does that mean his confidence has dropped? To Not at all. It's just a, a jab that Oscar De La Hoya has. It hurts you like a big punch. So you think before you do everything, and that's, that stops everything. If you think... Deloy with a quick left hook, partially blocked. 
Huarte starting to just paw with the jab. That is not the laser shot for which he's known. Counter right hand by De La Hoya as Huarte's jab slows down. Oscar getting the better of it now as we go into the last moment of round three. And this is the thing about Oscar. After every combination, he's back in position to do it again. Corte throws a good left jab and a right hand, and he's always out of position. And his corner should tell him about being in position. De La Hoya clearly so focused on the counter right hand that if Quarte starts to get lazy with the jab, Oscar could have a right hand festival. Now Quarte goes back to throwing the thudding jab instead of just pawing with it. Now, you know Gil Clancy's not going to let like Oscar De La Hoya laying his left hand down to his side there. This is when you want someone like Gil Clancy out speaking, taking charge, getting control here. But I think the plan is for only Robert Alcazar to talk to the fighter during the fight. Good thing about Gil Clancy, he can see what is going on. Well, we'll watch to see if Clancy talks to Delaware. Delaware lands a hard counter right. Quarte comes back with a right and a left of his own. Quarte takes both of him. This is something. This is good. Okay, put the pressure on him. Look at him. Stick fire. Stick to what you're doing. One, two, three, one, two. 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 Also, you have to be very careful. He doesn't hit you with your with his left. Good job. Okay, okay. okay. stick to your jabs. You're doing good. This is obvi obviously what De La Hoya has been working on in preparation for this fight because we've never seen him do this as often. Throwing the right straight over the top. And he gets back in position. But at the end of that round, Forte buckled De La Hoya's knees. Ike Corte, a man who commonly throws 80 to 85 punches around, averaging 48 attempts per round here as he shortens up his output to try to accommodate for De La Hoya and the firepower coming back. Harold, how'd you score the first three? Jim, I got it two rounds to one. 29, 28, Oscar De La Hoya. I gave Oscar rounds one and three. I think that when he opens up, he outpunches him and he hurts him. I, mean, I don't know, to me, he looks like a skinny little kid, but God darn, the minute he opens up, he gets straight and he whacks him. As far as Ike Corte goes, the snap is not really there. De La Hoya's head never went back once from a jab. I mean, if De La Hoya, if Corte does land the jab, Oscar usually either blocks it or it just doesn't hit them in effect. Oscar keeps his distance. Corte should understand at least touch his toe or something before you jab. Don't just throw your jab out there. You gotta have something that you see. Otherwise your jab will fall on his right hand all night. So do you think that so far, De La Hoya is winning the tactical battle, the mind game between the two fighters? Well, he's keeping his distance. You know, when you're an inch taller, use that inch. And that's what he's done so far. Cote is standing back, he's not moving his head, shakes his fist before he does something. If you want to beat a champion of the world, you have to get out there and mix it up and take it from him. But as De La Hoya flattens out, spreads his feet, and goes for more power on his connected punches, he brings himself down into Quarte's range. Yeah, because he, he wants to spring up with his hook. He understands that he gets power with springing with that hook. round four they trade jabs Eloya looking to find a way to shorten the distance between himself and Quarte while at the same time nullifying Quarte's jab by staying away when the Ghanaian star wants to throw now whenever Oscar decides to stop doing anything Quarte starts with his jab again so Oscar's got when he's not moving around do something Eloya landing a little right as Quarte awkwardly stepped to the side now Oscar does something different. He stoops down and jabs upwardly to the, to the shorter opponent. Notice Oscar. 
Jacob misses the jab or right hand. He gets right back into position. He doesn't try to follow the guy. Cote is moving around. Hasn't decided what kind of footwork he wants. Hasn't established any kind of tactics with his feet. And as round four comes to a close, the two fighters are getting better and better looks at one another because they are throwing fewer and fewer punches as time goes by. It's respect. Both have a lot of respect for each other. Both have a lot of respect. Okay, you got to keep thinking more and more. He, he only has the right hand. That's the only punch he's got. You got to watch out for that right hand. And, and keep him outside. You got to get a little busy with the hands. You let them in the fight. Throw those combinations once in a while. They look great. Okay, you have to start crouching a little bit, okay? And when you let out the jab, crouch out a little bit, okay? And step up the pressure. Don't give him a chance to do those things, all these things that he's doing at this point. When you jab, stay on the left-hand side, okay? Conventional wisdom is that Corte cannot win a close decision in what amounts to Oscar De La Hoya's hometown no matter how we score the fight the benefit of the doubt in the close rounds may be going to de la hoya oscar uh, corte will have to open up it's worth pointing out though that all three judges are from out of the united states two from the united kingdom one from japan as they attempt to eliminate any implication of favoritism in the judging here now oscar has Corte reaching out with paw and hooks rather than jabbing straight forward. Got his hand tucked to his side. And I'm telling you, Oscar can do a lot of things when his hands are in that position. And incidentally, between rounds, you probably heard Gil Clancy leaning in over Deloya's left shoulder and talking into his left ear. Throw more combinations, he said. They look beautiful. Every now and then, he said. Not constantly, just throw them every now and then and let the guy know that you have something. Now, when you start throwing left hook wild like that, then you get out of rhythm. So you got to really contain yourself. Oscar. And Corte having to discipline himself to choose his shots correctly in a fight in which he's fighting at a much more measured pace than he's ever been accustomed to in his career. What Oscar is doing, using the middle of the ring. He's not interested in the ropes. He's not interested in anything but the middle of the ring. Do you see anything here so far, George, that indicates that that 16-month layoff is a big factor for him? It has nothing to do with it. He's found a guy who can jab with him, Corte has, and he's trying to find a way to do it. One thing about it, he's brave. He hasn't given up. He's just looking for another way. Now he's slapping with his left jab. You don't want to do that. That's when you can really get countered because it throws your body inwardly toward the pointing of your feet. Well, and the two times that Deloy has landed sharply with big right-hand counters, it was when Quarte got lazy with his jab, pawed with it, didn't bring it back in a hurry, dropped it down to his waist, and he's holding it down there now. Now, you see, Oscar has no respect for Quarte's right hand. He's only watching the left jab, which is good. The guy... You know, but it, nothing's happening in this round, basically. I don't see De La Hoya doing much. I see Quarte doing most of the landing. Uh, not much is a lot for Oscar De La Hoya. Not much is a lot. Body punches inside. What, do you mean by landing? That, what does that because mean? Because you don't want to get out there and take some chances with a guy whose only chance thus far is to win by knockout. You want to stay positioned, don't take any risk. Jab him because the whole world of the city has a good jab. So I'll jab him. The crowd will applaud. You in your you got your hometown. Well, maybe he uh, maybe he improves his chances to win by decision in this round because I tend to agree with Larry. Quarte has controlled the activity here, and I'd be hard-pressed to see how a judge could get this round to Oscar. But when you get him to the ropes, you, you got to do something. Oscar, Oscar. You had to make some more steps side to side. I move your hands. Ocupado. Put one hand at a time. Put them together. Remember, start for the body. Okay, stop stepping back, okay? 
Okay, anytime you, you hit him, just follow him. Wherever he goes, just follow him. And keep, keep jabbing. When, if you decide to come back, keep jabbing when you start coming back. You gotta be first. Maintain him on the outside. And be, all, be careful with the right hand. Round six of a schedule 12. Oscar starts off with a stiff jail. And down goes Corte on a classic Deloria left hook. It was because of the, the way it dismantles you, that stiff jab of Oscar Deloria. Remember, the left hook was just part of it. Corte was down twice against Lopez. One of them was a flash, but the second one was on a hard punch like that. Oscar should suppose now that this was done because of the effectiveness of the left jab, not because of the, the right punch. Don't go back to what you were doing. Don't get over anxious and start reaching. Right hand retaliation for Guarte. Deloria begins to open up and trade, taking chances. It's not necessary for Oscar. Not necessary at all. He must believe he has the Ghanaian star hurt enough to contemplate finishing it. Down goes Deloria hand counter by Corte. It was because he got a little closer and he tried the uppercut too early. Now you got the makings of a classic. And now it's Corte who thinks he can finish. Hard to the body. Hard to the body. And Halpern warns him that he must follow his instructions. And Halpern gives De La Hoya a chance to recover. have been down in the sixth round. And both were real knockdowns on hard punches. Alperin deducted no points. That was just a warning to Quarte. Oscar's starting to open up with the, the left uppercut, which is not a good idea yet. And Quarte starting to come back with his jab. Oscar's going to have to go back to his left jab, take control of the fight again. If not, it's just going to get rougher and rougher. Another plus right hand cross for Quarte, and Deloya bustled for a moment, but didn't go down. Now we see this famous jab that Quarte was talking about. It was in the sixth round of the Leonard Hurst classic fight that the fight broke out. In the sixth round of this fight, the fight has broken out. It's on now, baby. It's it is on. on. It's up to the corners now to get Oscar back in control. This is when you need someone to communicate, communicate with you. Because the more he brawls, the more chances he gives to Quarte. Hard left hook upstairs for Deloya. Quarte grins. That means he was hurt. Now the jab is back for Oscar. Keep it up. Let him smile, but get your point. And Quarte has got to make sure he gets into the body of Oscar so he doesn't have any strength in that left jab. Another right cross for Quarte, and Deloya's left eye has begun to swell. What a round. You get your face there. Look a little more with the lateral, OK? Okay, don't forget, okay? All right, first we're going to watch as Corte goes down. He was a little off balance after taking a right hand. He comes in close, catches the left, doesn't appear to be hurt. Later, a perfect left hand drops De La Hoya on the seat of his pants. Wasn't so much power, okay, but right on the point. Don't blow your nose. Out. Witness the punch you don't see coming. Crowd cheers as we get past the midpoint of the fight. Mitch Alpern wants the okay, Vaseline yeah. off of Deloya's face. Yeah. Too much grease. Well, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, go! <laughs> that was very funny because the guy didn't take any grease off his face. He rubbed his head. Brilliant. 
If Robert Alcazar got away without taking grease off his face, that's a heck of a move by the I trainer. I mean, that was great. Now, that's the first experienced thing I've seen Alcazar do. All right, quickly, Harold, how do you have it? Jim, three rounds apiece, 57-57. But round six, definitely to Ike Quartet, because even though they traded knockdowns, Quartet certainly finished wrong. And look at the swelling under Deloya's left eye. I have it four rounds to two for Quartet. Quartet's right hand became a factor in the bout in that last round. All he has to do is stand on his, watch the pivot, make sure your pivot is your left, your right foot, and keep that jab out there. We can also remember that in that great classic fight, that it was Leonard's eye that also started to close up in the middle of the fight. His left eye from Tommy Hearns, great right hand. Now remember, Quarte has a history of tiring in the late rounds. But he's tired in the late rounds of fights where he's been throwing 70, 80, 90 punches in the early rounds. That hasn't been the case here. Awful conservative. At the same time, he's not waiting in. He has a lot of respect for the power of Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar's doing a good job with the jab. Forte is smelling blood. He's like a tiger got loose there. Everything is jumping up. He's jumping up on his jab. He jumps up on his right hand. Everything is jump, jump. Fascinating, and what a testimony to the brilliance of their work habits that both of these great fighters, at the height of their careers, have introduced new elements into their game, and successfully so, for this fight. You're right, Jim. Forte is showing more versatility in his boxing ability, and De La Hoya is using the right hand. That's right, whenever Oscar decides to throw a jab, whether it's hard or not, Forte does nothing. Now he's relaxed, he's got his elbows in, Forte has, and he's intending to jab some now. But now that Forte made his right hand a factor in the bout in the last round, De La Hoya is much more reluctant to throw the jab. Yeah, but he's gotten relaxed now, he's got his elbows close, and he feels like he can do whatever he wanted now. I don't see De La Hoya landing much at all. Hard right cross for Forte. De La Hoya wobbles again. Oscar trying to come back with the left hook. Forte looking for a shot. Like you're stuck in mud. You got legs, use them. You have better legs than the other guy, use them. When you set him up, let that combination, he covers up. You need to get some distance. Okay. Okay, you're doing very well now. I'm very proud of you. Okay? Now, when you, when you jab, I want you to step to the side, okay? Don't give him the full body. Don't give him the full body. Just step to the side, okay? End of the round. Forte with a nice combination. Probably won the round for him. You heard in the corner Gil Clancy saying to De La Hoya, you're fighting like you're stuck in the mud. You've got better legs than him. Use them. That's right. And De La Hoya begins to bounce. And you've always said, George, he's most dangerous offensively when he gets up and bounces like you this. You get a little bounce in his legs, he's going to do something to you. He, he works off the bounce. It gives him the rhythm to fire his power punches. Now he goes back into the mud, as Gil would say again. Keep your feet moving. If you're in condition, why not move them? you got nothing to prove. You can box. Between rounds, to my eyes at least, De La Hoya wore a discouraged look on his face. Forte always looks the same, even when he's down on the campus. De La Hoya unwilling to commit to the left. Too many right hands have been coming back. Yeah, he doesn't want to reach out at this point because he's been told, and that's why he's reluctant. Let the fight come to you. His right, or his left eye is swelling. Duarte's targeting, looking for chances to fire the right hand again. 
Illawarra reluctant to use his left. And a hard right hand again. Now the left hand of Corte is making some points here. He slaps with it. He's got his confidence in all angles now. Uppercut from Quarte. Sapunti doesn't throw all that often. Trying to put the right cross through the guard. De Oya not coming back. Quarte is creating the impression that he is starting to dominate De La Hoya. De La Hoya has to do something quick to change that. Cross. And he there lands the right hand that changes the bout momentarily. And the left hook. This boy's been in the Olympics. He's been in a lot of title matches. He's not going to fold. If you're going to whip him, you're going to have to whip him good. He's not going to fold under trying to discourage him with your smiles and those kind of things. No question, George. And, and when he's been in trouble in big fights, he has always come out, particularly in the 12th round, and closed the show. Did it against John John Molina. Did it against Pernell Whitaker. You have to look for him to reach down deep and try to do it again here. The mistake Oscar's making, he's not moving his feet. First few rounds, he kept his feet, making certain that his jab, he would be out of the range of Cortez's jab. Well, you fight the way you train. And there were rumors that Delaware's training camp was not great. But he says it was fine, and right now his left hook is coming back to life. combinations to the body, the flashy ones that you use with, your, with his mitts. Give me, give me two, two punches, okay, combinations. Papa, juntale dos golpes. Give me two punches, Papa. Give me the jab, and right after the jab, give me the two, two punches. And you have... When, when he starts that, he will follow you. He starts picking up confidence. Don't let him get any confidence. Follow him when he tells him hit him. Jab him, follow him. Wherever he goes, follow him. Put a pressure on him. Okay? Seconds out! All right, watch out. Come on. Seconds out. Round nine of a scheduled 12. There have been two knockdowns. Both men were on the canvas in the sixth round. First, Quarte went down, and then as the De La Hoya contingent celebrated, De La Hoya was planted on the seat of his pants by Quarte. Now De La Hoya goes jabbing to the body. He's hitting him in the chest with a left jab, which is what you want. The fight goes on. You hit a guy straight in the chest. He loses a lot of his power and all of that quick left hand and right hand stuff. And as Corte has limited his jab output, De La Hoya has gotten fewer and fewer chances to counter with the right hand. That was a big part of his fight plan, so he has to improvise something to replace it. Yeah, but uh, Oscar De La Hoya should be standing just a bit taller. Going to the body and the uppercuts landed. He got two left uppercuts through the guard. That's what you want to do. After you do it, sit back down on your guns and make him come to you for some more. Don't go reaching after him. Corte is very smart. Keeps his balance. He, his corner told him to follow him around, but he's, he, he's a little smarter than that. And Corte hungering for the chance to land one more big right hand. Those body shots are more important than the head shots right now that De La Hoya led. Bazooka Quarte begins to fire the jab in multiple numbers again. De La Hoya cannot afford to just stand there and watch Quarte dead. Yeah, he's trying to wait in time on right hand, but this guy's jab is so quick, and he knows so much about what he's doing, you won't be able to just time him overhand right on top of his jab. You might as well just get started yourself. This round has been all Quarte's jabs, with the exception of the two little De La Hoya flurries, one of them keyed by the uppercuts. Whenever De La Hoya throws a right hand, pretty much lands it whenever he wants. Right hand landed for Quarte, flush on the chin of De La Hoya. 
That was a killer right hand. Delahoya took it very well. And lands a right hand of his own. Oscar Delahoya is taking the challenge. He's not fighting like a champion. He's fighting like a challenger. I mean, he wants it. He wants this win. It may cost a few bruises, but you just got to go get it. Courage, composure, dedication, class on the part of two tremendous welterweight fighters. What a show. Good right hand by Corte. And that's a hard right hand by Corte. And Delahoya does not move his feet afterwards. And another right hand lands for Corte. And going into the last three rounds, Oscar De La Hoya is in trouble. The uppers are working beautiful. Oscar, you, you, the, the, hooks, the hooks are too wide, Oscar. You can't throw one combination yeah. to be satisfied. You got to go back. Show the judges you want to win the round. Hey, Oscar. Hoy is a very straight puncher. Showing straight uppercuts, but late in the round, you saw that big right hand. Second and out. if there is any Let's question go. about Oscar De La Hoya's will to win, taking that right hand was as clear a demonstration as you could get. De La Hoya is showing courage and willpower beyond any ever displayed in his career. But you courage know, and willpower don't win fights if you don't land the big punches. Bill Clancy said a very interesting thing in the corner. It's something we've alluded to here, which is you've got to show the judges you're trying to win the round. For, two, for long portions of the round, Oscar hasn't been punching. There he does. He wobbles Corte with another counter left. And this time, Corte regains his balance. Oscar just, has just got to have to be himself. All of the strategy stuff is already gone. Now throw it out the window and be yourself. Because time is running out. Yeah, Harold be yourself. Letterman, how do you have it through nine? Jim, 87, 84, six rounds to three. I caught say. I got I caught that with a five rounds in a row. I just don't think Oscar De La Hoya is doing enough to win these rounds. And I caught say is the effective aggressor. Then the more clean punches, he's coming forward. I mean, and good defense. That's for the story. One thing I got to mention, I caught that is measuring it for two rounds. He leaves that left hand out there just like Lennox Lewis. Mitch Halpern's letting him get away with it, but he's got to keep the glove closed in order to measure Oscar De La Hoya. If he opens it, it's illegal. Duarte knocked out Crisanto Espana in the 11th round in 1984. That's his late round knockout earlier in his career. Oscar De La Hoya knocked out Jimmy Bridal in the 10th round in 1994. Neither has ever had a 12th round knockout. Deloya trying to scratch out the beginning of some kind of a rally here in the round 10. And he can do it if he just continues to believe in his left jab. Whenever he throws combinations after the left jab, Corte is there. But when he does not, he misses. And we talked about role reversal. Remember Ray Leonard becoming the puncher to beat Tommy Hearns when Hearns had taken over the role of the boxer? So now... As De La Hoya tries to work with his left hand, it's Cuarte who's looking to counter over the top with his right. Cuarte's eyes are wide open. He hasn't lost anything. He's physically strong. He's ready for whatever amount of rounds that may pop up. He's in shape. Hard left hook for De La Hoya. That's what Oscar De La Hoya does. He shouldn't be holding back, trying to be something that training camps have molded you into. showing more effort here and might be able to squeeze the round out. Yep. Good left foot by left Oscar De La Maybe De La is doing enough to, as Gil Clancy said, show the judges you want to win the round. But the situation remains difficult. And with two rounds to go, Oscar De La Hoya badly needs to produce the six most spirited fighting minutes of his life. Okay, you get a lateral movement and, and, and be careful with his right hand. And don't let him out jab you. 
Faltan dos rounds nada más. Es única, es el el 11 and 12 and that's it. Just rest and relax. Two more rounds, Oscar. Come on. We need those, those rounds from the back. Okay. I, I don't want you to jab. I, I don't want you to launch when you jab, okay? I mean, put a lot of pressure on him. Okay. All right, don't let him follow you. Once he starts following, he picks up confidence. Okay? And then he starts landing all these kind of combinations. So be very careful. All right? Just get in and out. Get in and out. Oh, that's all you got to do. De La Hoya angrily getting up from his stool, and you heard Ike Cortez's trainer telling me didn't want him to jab. No jabs in the last two rounds. Obviously, he doesn't want De La Hoya to get a chance to counter with a right hand that could change the fight. They must believe in Cortez's corner that he's well ahead. I don't see that at all. And I, and I think they'd make a sad mistake to assume anything like that here in Las Vegas. I don't care who the judges are. Well, I, noticed, I don't think Cortez is going to listen to him either. How can you tell a fighter like that not to go in and jab? It's the reflex his whole career has been built on. All night, Oscar's been waiting to go over top of that right and left jab of Cortez. All night he's waited. You have to just start saying, forget, I'm not going to wait, I'm going to do it. Oscar hurt his right hand that time on the elbow of Cortez. He's got to attack. And he's got to attack with the left hand, which has been his bread and butter throughout his career. Oscar De La Hoya, if he's going to go down, has got to go down using the left hook. Yeah, but his jab is doing a lot of good, powerful things there. I like that jab of Oscar De La Hoya. He's using his footwork now, bouncing. Let me tell you, if you rush in now, Corte is so relaxed. It should have come a point where he was, was not so relaxed and started to charge a bit more. And Corte has shown no sign of tiring here. After a career marked by fatigue in the late rounds, he measured himself carefully in the early rounds tonight and has brought plenty to the table in round 11. You know, the side of Oscar's face is swollen. Corte is not taking advantage of moving over on that side at all. When you see some swelling, go over on that side and start picking your fight up. You don't need to be on his left side. Put your left foot on the other side of his left foot and stay over there fighting. Well, what about the fact, though, that that's De La Hoya's strong side? I mean, he has no strong sides when he can't see. Believe me, when your eyes are swollen like that, there's a vision problem here. You're supposed to just put your left foot on the, on the, on the opposite side of his left foot and fight him from there all night. This is the way De La Hoya's right eye swelled in the closing rounds against Miguel Angel Gonzalez. But that was a fight in which he was well ahead and comfortably headed toward victory. It's a different story. De La Hoya is doing very little in this round. And so his, his first flurry with 30 seconds left. Corte continues to grin in there like a man who thinks he is headed to the bank. Well, he's grinning, but he's not throwing a lot of punches after this. After every combination, Corte throws three jabs. Three minutes to go. And as he goes back to the corner, De La Hoya shook his head. Okay, I got, this is the last round. I don't want you to blow it. Vamos agarrando este round. We gotta get this round. You gotta be busy. Don't, don't let him out busy yet. You gotta show the judges this round. Can't have a chance, cry. Oh no, oh no. Okay. Can't have a chance, cry. Hey, this is the last round. Don't give him any chance. Control. You control the fight. It's the last round. Okay. Just control it. Beat him. That's all you need to do. Okay. Okay. Keep your hands up. You can, please be careful of that right hand. That's all he's got, and he's been infected. It's the last round. Don't blow the fight now. Oscar De La Hoya has a history, both as an amateur and a professional, of fighting great closing rounds when he needs them. Never in his long career has he more badly needed a great closing round than right now. Oscar's great. Oscar's 
Oscar De La Hoya is a brave man. He's and brave. And with the left hook, if you're going to lose, lose using the left hook. And he did it. He has shown that he is the bravest fighter in the ring tonight. Crowd trying to lift their man. Quarte holding on. Remember Lennon Hearns? Remember Tommy Hearns leading in the fight, right across the rope in the 14th round? Mitch Halpern looking on. Halpern's close. He's close. What a brave man Oscar De La Hoya is. Halpern's going to stop it out there. He's brave. De La Hoya is right there. It's Leonard Hearns all over if Halpern stops this fight. Quarte survives, still wobbly on his feet. A long way to go. Is De La Hoya punched out? That's it's all yours, Jim. So unlike Davey Pearl in 1981, Mitch Halpern elects to let the wounded warrior go on. And Quarte still with a chance to win. One knockdown already in the 12th. De La Hoya trying to make his left hook the deciding factor in the fight. Not Quarte's left jab, not Quarte's right hand. But the bread and Boy, butter punch that's when carried out. that minute punches, punches, you are out of win. He did it, though. But he might have one more flurry in it. He's got, he's looking for one more. Tell us about it, Jim. Let the crowd tell you. All you need to know is in the soundtrack. Both fighters showing their medal in this round. These are two champions. The great Phil Russell once said that sport is a combination of art and war. We are seeing it right here. And before we hear the judges' scores, if that's the way it's going to be, there's a rematch clause in the contract. Let's see it. And I would say that, Jim, no matter who wins this Absolutely. fight. Absolutely. It doesn't matter who wins the fight. Let's see it again. Irresistible stuff. De La Hoya never producing that last flurry that we might have expected in the closing minute of the fight. Here comes the bell. I had Ike Corte winning the fight. Let's see how that ra last round influences the re final result. I saw the fight. Oscar De La Hoya's left jab winning that boxing match hands down. After every three good shots of De La Hoya, Corte would land one. Excellent work. Copy box numbers in round number 12. A valiant Oscar De La Hoya landed 41 of 69, including that left hook in the opening seconds of the round that put Quarte down. Second knockdown of the fight for De La Hoya. And, and I'll add this. This is the kind of fight that helps Oscar De La Hoya, even if he should lose it. Showing the kind of courage he did to come back. Now here's the flurry during which Mitch Halpern watched but never decided to stop the fight. And he was right because Corte is returning fire. He's staying in the fight. He has earned the right to go on. He is not out on his feet. And, and in another few seconds, De La Hoya will have punched himself out. Yeah, but you don't want to get punched out by taking that many shots just by Corte. What a night. So how will the judges punctuate the drama? Well, here's a preview. Harold Letterman's scorecard. How'd you have it, Harold? Jim, 114, 113.
what say seven rounds to fight jim i thought oscar needed three points to even it out i would have given him two great job by mitch helper not stopping it i tell you it was a heck of a fight very close i just thought i caught tay had too big a lead going into the last round and i just don't think oscar did enough to pull it out and michael buffer has the official decision let's go ladies and gentlemen before we go to the Budweiser scorecards, how about a round of applause for the best welterweight fight seen in Las Vegas since Hearns and Leonard. We now go to the Budweiser scorecards. Larry O'Connell scores the bout, 115 to 114. He scores it for Corte. John Keane scores the bout. 116 to 113. He has it for De La Hoya. Ken Marita scores the bout. 116 to 112 for the winner by split decision. And still the undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Split decision victory for De La Hoya. We'll have more on the judges' scorecards in just a moment. But right now, let's look back at highlights of this brilliant, brilliant 147-pound war. The action heated up in round number six. When first, Quarte went down on a classic left hook by De La Hoya. And then moments later, as De La Hoya tried to press what he believed was his advantage, Quarte with a counter left of his own, and Oscar was down. In the next few rounds, Quarte was able to seemingly take the lead in the fight with his big right hand that forced swelling in Oscar De La Hoya's left eye and twice wobbled the champion. But then in the 12th round, high drama, as a De La Hoya seemingly desperately in need of a knockout, fired that left hook to open the round and put Quarte on the seat of his pants. And then, shades of 17 and a half years ago, like Ray Leonard against Tommy Hearns, De La Hoya pressed Quarte against the ropes and pounded and pounded and waited to see if referee Mitch Halpern would step in to stop the fight and give him the victory. But Halpern, correctly noting that Quarte was throwing back the whole time, never did so. As it turns out, it was okay for Oscar anyway, as he gets the split decision. And amazingly, amazingly to me at least, Oscar De La Hoya on the cards of the two judges who scored the bout for him, John Keane and Ken Morita, did not need that big 12th round rally to win the fight. If he only wins the 12th round 10-9, or even if the round is even, he still wins the fight on the cards of Keane and Morita. Astonishing. And right now, Larry Merchant is with the winner and still unbeaten, Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar, Oscar, congratulations. You asked for a dangerous fight. You got one. Oh, well, I called it from the beginning. I mean, this guy's a very uh, good warrior. I mean, I give him all the credit in the world because I gave him some punches the last round that he wouldn't go down. What surprised you about him? Was it his ability to box better than you thought? Tell us. I think I underestimated his boxing ability. Um, when I would try to rush him, I thought he would stay forward and fight me, but um, he did move some uh, lateral movements, some waist movements. He's a very good fighter. I give him a lot of credit. All right. In this, in this sixth round, you knocked him down. It appeared you were coming on. Did you get a little anxious and walk into a punch? Um, I got a little anxious, yes. I mean, this guy... Uh, this guy was a very dangerous fighter. I mean, uh, I was looking for his left jab, his left hook. Came back with the right hand I mean, and caught me clean. In the second half of the fight, for long spells, Oscar, you weren't doing much. You were going after him, going after him. In your corner, they were urging you to do something, yeah. at least to impress the judges. Right. Well, what happened there? Um, I was a little worried of his uh, punching power. This guy uh, is a very powerful hitter. And um, I know I have to... Uh, it's a big learning lesson because I have to train harder, be more prepared, be aware, not, not, never underestimate my opponents. And uh, this guy's a very tough, tough, worthy opponent. 
When you went out for the last round, did you think you had to do something dramatic to win the fight? Not dramatic because uh, I knew all along that he was, uh, nobody was really putting the pressure. Um, I was finishing the rounds pretty good. Um, he wasn't uh, connecting me with the goals, those good jabs that he has, but uh, it was just uh, a very uh, it's, it's, intimidating fight for me. But you certainly understood or, or conveyed the idea that there was some great urgency when you out, went out in the 12th oh, round. Of course, for the people, for the fans, for the public. They want to see good action-packed fights. I gave it to him the last round. I dropped him. I almost knocked him out. I had him. Oh my gosh! I'm very. Did you upset get arm? With did you get arm weary? Because he he was hurt, obviously, but he stood in with you, kept throwing punches. No, this guy can take a punch. This guy's a, a real strong hitter. Can take a punch, and I give him all the credit in the world. Finally, this. There's a rematch clause in your contract in case he won. But this was such a great fight, and so many people got pleasure out of it. Do you want to give the public? a rematch of this fight. I don't know, you think it was a great fight, Larry? I don't think so. I don't really think so. There's better and bigger, better fights out there for me. I know that. More exciting fights that the people want to watch. Basically, you're saying you don't want to fight him again. I'll fight him any time. I mean, uh, you know, as long as the contract is, uh, is good, the date, the, the weight, everything, the people want to watch it again. Uh, I think people want to watch more exciting fights. Uh, I Corte, uh, uh, sometimes he did fight, sometimes he didn't. But uh, hey, that's his style, that's my style, and uh, we gave you this fight tonight. Thank you very much for an outstanding fight. Oscar De La Hoya, Jim. All right, thank you very much, Larry. Let's quickly take a look at final punch stat numbers, and you can see that they're close. Uh, De La Hoya landing five more punches than Quarte. Quarte throwing 57 more overall. Higher connect percentage for De La Hoya, who was more measured in his output. Jack and in.